Conservation forensics is a combination of two disciplines. Conservation biology, which aims to understand the conservation status of endangered species on our planet, and also forensics, which is the scientific study of crime. We're using all the tools that you see around me to address a very serious global problem, which is illegal wildlife trafficking. So we use the technologies and expertise that we have here in the school to offer support to local government and international law enforcement to combat that serious problem. So we offer the ability to use DNA tools to identify the species identity based on its DNA. And then we also use stable isotope technologies to understand where an organism might have come from. I'm a member of the Conservation Forensics Lab here at Hong Kong U and my team is in charge of the bird projects within the lab. And our two main projects right now are on the helmets and hornbills and on yellow-crested cockatoos. With the helmets and hornbills, our main project is to sample the casks or the part of the beak confiscated by the Hong Kong government. The native range of this bird extends from southern Thailand through Indonesia. And at the moment, we think most of the poaching is happening in Indonesia. So we're hoping with the DNA samples to be able to confirm that and then also pinpoint which part of Indonesia those birds actually came from. Hopefully the data from the forensic team will assist the custom department in Hong Kong or in other countries to identify the hornbills and to stop the illegal trading of this threatened species. The powerful data needs to be taken in the international level and to be a very strong evidence of the trade. In 2015, the species was uplisted to critically endangered. Prior to that, it was listed as near threatened. So that's a three category jump, which is almost unprecedented in other animal species. So the yellow-crested cockatoo is a very interesting species because they have been introduced to Hong Kong, but they're critically endangered in their native range. And so this population in Hong Kong may actually represent a really important refuge population for the conservation of this species. So we're currently using historical observation data provided by the Hong Kong Birdwatching Society to reconstruct the population trends in the species in Hong Kong. We've been collecting bird data since 1950s. And so pretty much we've got the biggest um, bird database in Hong Kong. The data contains um, the location of the bird, how many of the birds, and also the species of the birds. One of the big questions is whether the population in Hong Kong is stable or whether there's any threats to the species here. There may be ongoing poaching or they may not be breeding successfully, so we're trying to assess that. But eventually we'll pass that data back to the society, which can be used for educational purposes. Another aspect of the work is regarding the actual trade of the species. At the moment, it's nearly impossible to tell whether the birds are wild caught or whether they're captive bred. So we're developing a tool using isotopes, which may help us to identify the difference between wild and captive bred birds. Knowledge exchange is very important. Not only are we sharing with government some of the tools that we're using so that they can rapidly lead to prosecutions, we're also trying to spread knowledge of the conservation biology to the local population here in Hong Kong, which is really the gateway for many of these products going into China. I think the data is really important to feed into our education programs. We can collaborate to um, get campaigns to raise people's awareness on these kind of threatened species and also to let them know that these kind of illegal trading is really happening and Hong Kong is playing an important part in this illegal trade. We hope that by disrupting supply chains, by prosecuting criminals who are trading wildlife illegally, that we can foster their conservation for the future. So the more information that we can gather here about the trade and share that with the world is going to have a massive global impact. <laughs>